Today, we are making the most practical IoT-based water level monitoring and control system using the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module, a 02 uw waterproof ultrasonic sensor and Blink application. Right now, what I'm about to explain, you all have to listen carefully. For monitoring water level, you can use the HC-SR04 ultrasonic sensor the JSN-SR040 waterproofed ultrasonic sensor and even the TOF10120 laser rangefinder distance sensor. I have already used all these sensors for water level monitoring but among all these sensors, the most reliable, accurate and durable is the a 2 uw waterproof ultrasonic sensor. Each has its pros and cons. For example, if you look at the HC-SR04 ultrasonic sensor, it's a 5-fold sensor and you can use it with 5-fold compatible controller boards. But if you want to use it with 3.3-volt compatible controllers, then you will need a voltage converter. Its range is also limited and it's not waterproofed, so there is a high chance it could get damaged by water. And if you consider the JSN-SR040 waterproof ultrasonic sensor, no doubt it's better than the HC-SR04 ultrasonic sensor because it's waterproofed and it comes with quite a long wire. But I don't like its interface board because it increases the project overall size. Moreover, I'm not entirely satisfied with its output. And if you're thinking of using the TOF10120 laser rangefinder sensor for water level monitoring in water tanks, that's not a good idea because its range is quite limited. And then here comes the beast. It's completely waterproofed. There is no interface board. You can entirely connect its fire to the controller board. It's compatible with 5 volt and 3.3 volt controller boards. So there is no need to use any kind of voltage converter. If you want to know more about its technical specifications, it's interfacing with Arduino and ESP8266. Then I highly recommend watching my getting started video on the a 2 uw waterproof ultrasonic sensor. And let me also tell you, this is the UART version of the a 2 uw waterproof ultrasonic sensor. After selecting the sensor, next you need to decide which variant of the ESP32 you want to choose. You know, there are different variants of the ESP32 boards. If you want your controller to work for years and you don't want any issues while uploading your programs, then I strongly suggest you get yourself a pair of these ESP32 development boards. This version of the ESP32 is cheaper and that's why most people buy this board, but later on, they face a lot of issues. If you check my ESP32 based projects, you will see that I have been using this particular ESP32 development board for years because its build quality is good. It's also durable. You can connect a LiPo battery with it and it has more GPIO pins. So I highly recommend getting yourself a pair of these ESP32 boards. I have added the Amazon link to the same exact ESP32 board in the description. As usual, I'm using my newly designed ESP32 development board because it already has most of the components needed for this project. Like for example, this 5 volt relay, which I can use to control a water pump, the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module itself, and most importantly, this 5 volt and 3 amps power supply. Since this is a development board and I use it for making and testing my ESP32 based projects, so that's why I have soldered female headers on the left and right sides of the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module so that I can connect other sensors and breakout boards. And that's not all on this development board. For the a 2 yuw waterproof ultrasonic sensor, I have these four contacts labeled as ultrasonic sensor. So I can connect the ultrasonic sensor voltage and ground wires to the 3.3 volt and ground contacts and the TX and RX wires to the contacts labeled as TX and RX. For the ultrasonic sensor interfacing, you can follow this circuit diagram and you can follow this circuit diagram for the relay driver. You can also use a ready-made 5 volt relay module. If you also want to make the same ESP32 board, then you can watch my previous video. I will add a link in the description. My hardware setup is ready. Everything looks quite neat and clean. There are no jumper wires, so there are no loose connections. As usual, I'm using this 110 or 220 volt AC bulb as the water pump. Now, let's start with the Blink Web Dashboard setup. While you're logged into your Blink account, click on the new template. Write the template name. While ESP32 is selected as the hardware type and Wi-Fi as the connection type, click on the Done button. After this, all the steps are exactly the same. 
I have already created quite detailed video on the Blink VIP dashboard setup so if you face any issues you can watch my getting started tutorial on the ESP32 and new Blink V2.0. When the dashboard is ready, simply copy these credentials, open the program that you can download from our website electronicclinic.com and paste the credentials. Don't forget to change the GPRS credentials. If this is your first time using the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module, then you will also need to install the ESP32 board in the Arduino IDE. For this, you can watch my getting started tutorial on the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module. Next, you will also need to install the entire Blink library package. For this, simply go to the Sketch menu, then to include library and click on the Manage Libraries. Type Blink in the search box. You can see I have also installed this library. It works with over 400 boards. Finally, you can upload the program. In my case, I have already uploaded this program. Next, you can start with the Blink IoT application setup on your smartphone. Our application is also ready and now let's start with a practical demonstration. I have brought up the project using a 12 volt adapter. For demonstration purposes, I have connected this 110 or 220 volt AC bulb. Instead of using this bulb, you can connect a real water pump. It could be AC or DC. Just make sure it doesn't exceed the current carrying capacity of the relay. If you need to control a large water pump, then you will need to use a power relay. For this, you can watch my video on IoT power relay. Anyway, remember safety first. When the 110 or 220 volt AC supply is connected, never touch the relay contacts as it can be extremely dangerous. It is important to note that when working with mains voltage, proper safety precautions should always be taken and it is advisable to consult relevant electrical codes and standards. The ultrasonic sensor is in its place. The ESP32 and Blink application are connected to the Wi-Fi. Let me also tell you there is no need to connect to the same Wi-Fi. You can use a different Wi-Fi network or GSM network on the mobile side. It is an IoT-based water level monitoring system. You can connect to your ESP32 board from any part of the world. At first, I thought of using this bucket as a water tank, but when I started testing, I got incorrect readings because of the high sensing angle of the ultrasonic sensor. If the diameter of this bucket were a bit larger, then there wouldn't have been any issue. Anyway, for demonstration purposes, I will use this wooden sheet as the water level. Right now, on the Blink application, you can see the water tank is empty. I could turn on the water pump automatically, but I want the control in my hands, so let's turn on the water pump.
when the control is in your hands then you can turn off the water pump at any time let's say i don't want to completely fill the water tank so i can just go ahead and turn off the water pump i can also add a condition in the programming to turn off the water pump automatically when the water tank is let's say 90 to 95 percent or 100 percent full it's totally up to you when you want to turn on and turn off the water pump so that's all for now support me on patreon for more videos i hope you like today's episode like and share this video with your friends see you in next episode and thanks for watching